Hi everybody, it's Andy Phillips here, and uh, welcome to our our one thirty slot. This is the 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 the, the tax slot with Mark Barrett. Hi, Mark. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Now we've got uh, we've got something which uh, today, which I think is really really interesting. I think this is something which we don't really touch too much on, um, but it's something which is going to be really relevant to a lot of people here, and yeah. that is the tax deductibility of training. Now, we all have to do training, don't we, at some point? Um, and most of us do quite a lot of it over the over the years. So let's have a little look at what we can do and, and the, the sort of the process behind it. Good. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so if my slides are up, I'll start yep. to talk through it. OK, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, property is a specialist occupation. Now, we know that that's why you take training and you must take training from the right people. And it's because Simon is an excellent trainer is why I do these presentations for PIN. But can you get tax relief on the training costs? So that's what we're going to talk about today. There is a, a write up on this, a bite sized tax, um, which I have shared into various PIN forums. Um, if anyone is not a member of the forum who happens to be seeing this presentation, email us. To my email, you can see the email address at the bottom of the page there. That just simply tells my staff that you're a member of the PIN family so that you will hopefully not have to queue quite as long as others to try to have a conversation with me if I can be of help to you. So that's our topic today. When is tax, tra uh, tax, when is training costs tax deductible? Quick intro to us, Chartered Accountant. Um, I am a property, land uh, property landlord myself. I was a developer, been doing that for 25 plus years now. So I do walk the talk. Um, We've got a full accountancy service. We do an awful lot of work with overseas. That's enough of that. Important page. Um, as always, when I'm doing these presentations, you're skimming the surface. The presentation I'm giving you today is not professional advice. Um, I'm just simply trying to tell you where the questions are and give you the clue as to how to deal with the questions. So the information I'm providing um, is not professional advice. You must not rely on it. Take advice from your own accountant. If you haven't got a good accountant, come and talk to us. Okay, here's the overview. Um, do you like it when the accountant does tax? Because the overview is difficult enough, but the detail is interesting. There's two taxes we're going to be focusing on. Let's imagine that you're doing your, you're an investor in your own name, you're paying income tax, or let's imagine you're in a company, you've got corporation tax. Can you get tax relief for your training costs? If so, you're going to get something like a 20% uh, tax relief. The second part is, can you get the VAT back? So therefore, can you reduce the cost by, say, another 20%? That's pretty important. Now, two really important distinctions we're going to be making. Um, and it's important with all of this that you get into the detail and actually think about the detail. So the first question you need to ask yourself is, are you investing or trading in your own name or in a company? The rules are different. It's going to be very important. You'll see that. And have you started trading yet? Uh, trading, I'm using the word trading, not in the normal sense of trading versus investment, but have you started your business? Okay, really important. The next part, please, everyone. Pay careful attention to the words in legislation. Too often I speak to people who quote me back some legislation and they've read into the legislation what they hope it says or what they wish to interpret it as saying you can't do that you have to actually read the words that are there so you'll notice that i'm going to be using a highlighter as i've just done here i'm going to embolden some words just so you understand that's the word i'm going to be looking at and i want you to focus right here we go ready for the detail let's go oh yeah let's you're investing trading in your own name you see there's two slides coming up here First of all, we're going to deal with the period of your initial training or your pre-trading. Now, there's an important document, um, BIM 42526, BIM 42526. And it says, providing training is incurred wholly and exclusively for the purposes, that's the word I've highlighted, of the trade carried on by the individual. So let's have a look at the word purposes. That's that. When you start to read these things, you can read the whole thing, yeah, 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 purposes, yeah, whatever. It's actually important to know what the word means. Business purpose test. 
this is guidance to HMRC to its own officers, hence the reason why it's written this way. They are encouraged not to take an unduly narrow view of whether something um, is pre uh, updating pre-existing skills or a new skill. And there's where we're going to be really focusing now on updating existing or a completely new skill. Look at the last word as well, the last sentence. And exclusively for the purposes of the existing trade. Right. So let's imagine now, uh, and obviously we're talking to a PIN family, so I'm going to use PIN training courses, which I happen to think are great and you're a known fan. You've gone to your mastermind, uh, your accelerator course, MMA. You paid your money. You're not involved in property at all at this stage. You've paid your money. Is that tax deductible? Well, you don't have any knowledge yet. You, you're not in the trade, I just said. Therefore, your knowledge, so you can't update an existing skill because you haven't got a skill. You're not in it. You're not in the business. And it's completely new to you. <clears throat> Initial and pre-trading costs cannot be tax deductible. Now, too many people now stop at that point and say, oh, well, that's fine. So I've done my MMA. Now I've joined on to Mastermind. Brilliant course. Um, therefore, because I've, I've already done some training, I now must be updating my existing training. That's missing the word existing trade. I really want to focus on this bit. Um, it's not on the screen. I'm going to read you something. It's a recurring problem whether a cost is capital or revenue in nature. Now, if you are pre-existing, you're, you're in business already, you'll know that this is something we talk about frequently, particularly on refurbs, are you, is that a capital cost or revenue cost? But I'm going to read you something. Now, this is from a court case from 2006 involving a Mr. Das. And Mr. Das um, it was actually in the business of taking thing, uh, training people to take him to tribunal. Guess what? He took his dispute to tribunal and lost. Back in those days, it was called the special commissioners, but tribunal. So, of course, being um, um, quite knowledgeable, he said, well, fine, I'll take it any further. So he then took it to the high court. Now, law of precedence in our country says a high court is a high level, high level court, and it binds any other high court or anyone below them. So the only way you can overturn this, people, is to go to the appeal court. And none of us have got the money for doing that on a bit of tra on, on a bit of training costs. So we are locked into these rules now. From the High Court, um, there was a judgment, and HMRC gave the following words. This is important. Where attendance at a course is intended to give business proprietors new expertise, knowledge, or skills which they lack, it brings into existence an advantage that it is of enduring benefit. There's your phrase. It's of enduring benefit to the business. We take the view that the expenditure is therefore of a capital in nature and deduction is prohibited from your income or corporation tax. I'd actually refer to income tax there, but the same rules apply to corporation tax. It's of an enduring benefit if it's a new knowledge. Let's move on. But I want to come back to look at some of the courses that you might do if you're involved in property. Right. So now I'm going to deal with trade has started. So you've started. Well done. Let's go back to our friend 42526. Providing it's incurred totally exclusive for the purposes of the trade. So purposes were done of the trade carried on by the individual at the time the training is undertaken. Expenditure on courses with the purpose of updating their skills is revenue. Fantastic. So here we have a statement that because you're already trained and you were in action, the costs are tax deductible. So I'm gonna take a pause on that one now. Let's think about this. You are an investor. Just imagine yourself, you are an investor. Um, and you said, I want to do a PLO course. I want to understand PLOs. Great time for PLOs right now. Um, don't believe me, listen to Simon. Well, it's like investing, isn't it? Because it is still an option to purchase. So is it a new skill? Remember we talked about new skills? Is it a new skill or an extension of an existing skill? Well, I think it is just merely an extension of an existing skill. And we know that HMRC 
should not take an unduly narrow view. So if you're an investor learning a new, learning additional skill, PLO, I think that is probably claimable. I know it's a new skill, but it's an adjunct. So this is this is when you've 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 gone through maybe MMA. Yep. Started your business up. Yep. You you're starting to um, uh, do property investing in a serious yep. way. Yep. Uh, and you're looking at something like purchase lease options, a PLO course, mm -hmm. to extend your skill sets within being a property investor. Great. There's the word. Extend your still skill sets. Yep. Yeah. Right. Not a new skill. Get you. It's continuing professional development. Yeah. So, um, as an accountant, you know, we have forty-seven staff. We're sending people on training courses all the time. But are they all related to accountancy? <laughs> yes, they are. We're not trying to train them to become plumbers. If we did, that's not tax allow uh, allowable because it would be a it's a new skill. I so it's a, not just a position. This if you if you if, to to think about this in a way, right? Yeah. So. To relate it to what you've just said, you're yep. a, you're a, you know a, you're a, a tax and accountancy firm, yep. and you send people to do some training. Now they could be doing training. It, it's, you say it's everything to do with accountancy, so it's extending their skill sets. Yes, but it could be something which isn't specifically do to do with accounting as such, but it's to do with extending their skill set skill sets as an accountant. Which well, yeah, yeah. Um... Companies are different. We're going to get to companies in a minute. So let's imagine that I'm I, I'm acting as a sole trader, yeah. okay? and I want to go off and learn funnel matrix. We we'll talk about something techy, IT. It's what you do, Andy, and do it very well. Well done. Um, is that? Am I creating a new skill set for myself, or am I doing something for my existing trade? So it's not the same as accountancy, but it's next door to. It, it is a natural follow-on. So I think that's claimable. Right. But if I bring it back to property a minute, having done the, the thing about an investor with PLOs, let's look at another one. Let's imagine now you're doing rent to rent. And now you want to do a PLO course. Well, this is arguable that that's allowable too, because there is a lease period in a PLO contract. So initially I argued, if you like, with the P underlined with PLO, that it looks like a purchase. You're just delaying the purchase. Now, if I was doing rent to rent, I might argue that I'd underline the L because a lease looks a bit like a rent to rent. You've got control of a property that's not your own. Looks a bit the same. I think I could probably claim that one. Now, let's give you a, a third variation. Now, let's imagine that you're an investor and you want to learn deal sourcing. Well, hang on a minute. You are an investor, you buy and hold property, absolutely fine. Now you want to learn to be an estate agent? How does an est how close is an estate agent to a property investor? It's not that close. It's got some similarities to about properties and valuations of properties and competency to value and assess a property, yes. But you've got money laundry regulations, you've got ombudsman, you've got all of the other compliance activities, completely different. So that you'd have as an investor. So now I think you're talking about a bit of a stretch. So if you attended a course and learned something about deal sourcing, now you, you put some heavy heavyish cash down because you've already started and you've tried to get your deal sourcing started and you've done some training. Now we take a second lot of training. Now that second lot's probably allowable, the first one wasn't. See all the gray coming in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, it, and it's all about how, it's, how, it's, so just, just, just to, to clarify again, um, how far does HMRC look into distinctions in the, of this nature? I mean, if you was you see the, the way I would look at it, and I'm probably wrong. I normally am. <laughs> but, I can you know, you're you're going, going, and you're not wrong on this one. But go on. <laughs> if I've started as um, as a, my property business, yeah. And uh, I've started doing things like, say, I've just been doing some refurbs and flips, and yep. which is how I basically started doing stuff. I started doing some refurbs and flips, and I bought some new builds and things like that. Um, and I decided I want to do uh, a property sourcing course. Yeah. Okay. 
the way I would be looking at that is that that's just part of my property business. I need to, I need to source some property. I want to find out the best way of doing it. I'm not really doing it to be a, uh, a letting agent or an estate agent. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it purely to source, you know, learn how to source property for myself, and maybe if I can source property for others as well, I can make a make a few quid doing that. But it's uh, all- okay, well, there you've just stepped into the new realms. See, this is what I want, and this is what I want to find because I think this is how most people tend to tend to think. You know, this is a, yeah. you know, this is I'm, I'm in a property business, and whatever I do, whatever I do within that property business, it's all legitimate. Any training I should be able to just be just be tax deductible because I'm I'm already in the process of of. Um, of a business and so mm-hmm. whatever i do in that is all to do with property investing my property business but you're saying that that's not quite the case it, it isn't um i'm going to go back to that court case i was talking about mr das yes and let me explain what he was doing um he was trading as a tutor in english and as an advisor in bringing appeals before tribunals so he was an advisor right again okay he took a course which would have left which would have resulted in a diploma um in law because he found that to be useful for his work in relation to bringing appeals before tribunals so that sounds fairly close doesn't it yeah he's already dealing with appeals now he wants to get something to do with law well yeah that's okay and that's what he lost because it was a new skill so if you now say, I'm going to go on a deal sourcing course because I want to learn to source deals for me, well, yeah, that's fine. But I think it's the wrong course. You should go on a course for investors to learn how to source deals for yourself. If you're going to deal sourcing course because you want to learn how to package a deal up, what the regulations are for ombudsman and money laundering and everything else, you're only going on a deal sourcing course because you want to create a new business a new style of income from deal sourcing. Right. Okay. Yeah. This is a toughie. And, and I think this is this is the reason why it's so important to get you on to talk about these sort of things because I can guarantee uh, that most people that go through this process mm-hmm. will just see property business as property business as property business. So whatever it is, it's in my property business. It's increasing my skills in my property business yep and 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 they can get unstuck with this and this is why it's it's good to well talk to people like you and 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 get their affairs sorted out properly get the right advice and talk about these things uh, and thank you for that it is right uh, you're, you're you're right with that i i've listened again you people have heard me talking on these presentations before i've listened probably in total now for 20 hours to Simon speaking, never managed to trip him up once on anything he said. Can't say that for other trainers. I've listened to them and they go, yeah, 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 it's all, it's all tax deductible. It's all fine. It's all fine. Yeah, not being funny. They're giving tax advice. Hmm, great. Um, and, and sort of sweeping it under the carpet as well to, to get onto the thing they want to talk about. <laughs> yeah, which is, let me sell you another course. That's what they really want to talk about. And don't worry, it's tax deductible. You're going to get 20% off. Uh, and I, I see how they're doing. It's all part of the sales pitching that some of these gurus do. Um, but the reality is you've got to get down to the dirty detail. Now, let, let, let's pick up another point. Let's imagine you've done a £750 training course to learn about property. Well done. You still haven't started. So you can't say it's for a business that is already running. You're not Right, you, you have, you've done the training to start with. Now you go to a second one, and you still haven't started. You're just going to get a bit more training, and 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 there are what seems to be sort of fairly professional students around who just go from training course to training course. They still haven't started, so it can't be wholly necessarily for the benefit of the trade because they haven't started. Well, they, ha- they don't have a business, so there yeah, is no, there started. is nothing to trade. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then they get the second £750 bill. Do they claim it? Yes, they probably claim it. Will the taxpayer react? The taxpayer, if he reacted, would win. But will they react? Probably not. Where I worry, and it's going to be the same I'm going to say on the next slide. So I'm going to roll forward on my slides. Is that okay, Andy? Yeah, sure. I'm going to do a company now. 
I, I'm going to break off that bit we were talking about, do this, and then I want to pick up again. Okay. We've got a completely different situation here. We've got different taxes out. We're not talking about a roll trend 4526. And this says, this removes any possible tax charge on the individual where an employer or third party incurs expenditure for work-related training for employees. Doesn't matter who incurs it. So let's imagine now, I'm going to go back to the story we were just discussing. Let's imagine that you're a, an individual, you haven't formed a business, nothing is happening. You spent your 750 quid, you've done your bit of training, you go, yes, it's definitely for me. If you spent another 750 quid, do I think tax man's going to look? No, not particularly. It, there's a possibility and they'll probably win if they did. Okay. Now you're about to spend £20,000 on a mastermind course. Brilliant. And you're still not started your business. And you want to now claim that as a tax deductible expense for a pre-existing business. But it didn't exist when you incurred the expenditure, when you had the bill. Is it a big enough number that's going to stand out like a sore thumb on your tax return? Oh, yeah. Is it almost inviting HMRC to come and ask you a question? Oh, yeah. So typically what I would say to someone is, look, go and do your, 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 your MMA. Do that. If you think it's it, if this is for you, before you start incurring more training costs, get the thought process sorted out on name or company. Frankly, if you're going to spend £20,000 on training, it would be ridiculous to think that your business is not going to be big enough to warrant a company. Get a company. Now, get your company to buy the mastermind course. Because the mastermind course has been paid for by the company. It's been instructed, ordered by the company, and billed to the company. The company now sends you as a director and says, Oi, you, go on that training course. And because it's work-related training for employees. That's the phrase here is employees, but it does include directors. There cannot be any tax charge on the individual, and it is tax deductible for the company. So before you start spending huge amounts of money, think about own name or limited. If limited is the right answer, go limited. Get the company to engage into the training program and pay for it, not you. Have I answered your question from earlier on, Andy? No, I, th I think this is this is this is perfect because in very very simple terms, and yep. which I like because I'm a very very simple guy. Um, before you, what you're saying is before you, you, the training can be tax deductible once it's actually in the right vehicle and yep. you've got yourself set up in the right way. Which you, and again, it's the sort of thing which we talk about every single time we we do these it's yeah. like if there's one thing oh, no, we're gonna say again. Yeah. is get yourself set up properly right from the beginning with yeah. the right sort of advice to to go through because you're going to save a ton of cash yeah on, on 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 just on tax i forget about everything else on in accountancy you know but just on on just very basic principal tax stuff yeah. um and so that the the what you're saying here is basically uh, if you're going to start getting into this and start doing some some training, which is going to be substantial, that's going to make a you know it, and they, these sort of things. Mastermind take makes a substantial difference to the way you do things. It takes yes. makes a substantial difference to your life. Yes, it's quite a bit of bit of dough, but it's like a it's like an investment in yourself to build yourself over the next twelve months to go and do yep. something. It's yep. very big. Yep. Get the business set up first. Get it done in the right sort of way. Understand yes. exactly why you're doing it, so you're in control, total mental control of where you're going. You know, so you're not just taking blind advice and just doing things because someone says something, but you actually understand why you're actually putting that that company together. Yes, and then you can then you can do something like the mastermind program. Do it through the business, which basically means that it, you're not liable for the tax. The, the company is is uh, is going to be taking it on, and it's going to be tax deductible through the company. Correct. Because you've structured it right. And it's like, again, we say the same thing every single time. Don't just get a £12 company set up and go and try and do it yourself. Do it um, do it through someone because it'll save you some, a lot of cash. It, it will save you some money. The, 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 if, you don't, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. There's absolutely no point in, and the number of people that moan at accountants, any accountant, every accountant, saying, 
but my mate on Facebook said I can claim tax relief. I don't care what your mate on Facebook says. I'm trying to stop you going to tribunal. Um, so, yeah, get some planning done. I've left that little teaser phrase up there. You'll love this bit. I'll go to that one. There is no territorial limitation on your training location. But be careful, please. Um, lots of people will say, oh, that's fantastic. Um, I'm going off to Barbados for two weeks with my family. And whilst I'm there, I'm going to attend a half day training course. No, don't be silly. You can't get it. You can't get the trip tax deductible for that. But there are organizations who do overseas travel and they are really heavily doing training. Do they go out for a beer in the evening? Yes. Is there a break where you can go for a little swim? Yes. But these training locations. The exemption for the employee also relates to childcare, travel, subsistence. So, you know, your, your journey time or your travel costs and the childcare um, is a tax deductible expense because your company sent you on some company business to go and do some training. I think that's lovely. I like that bit. Yeah, um, training location, please don't save Barbados for a half day training session, please. That doesn't work. Okay, we're going to do the same as we did last week, or two weeks ago. VAT, that was lovely. Um, on the 11th of September, we had one of these presentations about VAT. Again, it was skimming the surface. I know it was. It, I know that that presentation is still available in, in the uh, for the pin subscribers to so check it out. But the essence, if your sales, your outputs are VATable, then you can register for VAT, which means that you have to charge your customers VAT because you registered for VAT but you can claim back the VAT you suffer. So again, I get the people coming to me saying, Mark, I spent uh, 5,000 pound on training. There's VAT on top of that thousand pound. I want to register for VAT. I want to get my thousand quid back. And then you say, yeah, okay. Does that mean on all of your sales, you now have to charge VAT? Um, are you happy to charge VAT? All oh, my customers won't suffer that. Mm, okay. In which case you're going to lose 20% of all of your revenue because you're going to have to give the tax man his slice just so you register for that to get the thousand quid back. But that even presumes that you can register. So again, I'm not gonna do the whole of last week's presentation again. Let me just do a snippet of it. If you're letting out residential property under an AST, your supply, which is rent, you are providing accommodation and your sales, therefore is rent, is an exempt supply. You cannot register for VAT. I don't care whether you want to or not. You cannot register for VAT. It's got nothing to do with mandatory limits or voluntary. You cannot register. Therefore, you cannot claim back the VAT that you suffer. Um, service accommodation letting. Yes, that is a valuable supply. So you could choose to register. But be careful you don't register too early because now you've got to give the government 20% of your income, of your gross income. Obviously, there's things like Tom's VAT and everything else there, but um, you're going to lose the income um, just so you can get back your VAT that you suffer. Residential flips. I refurb, sell a house. It's an exempt supply. You cannot register for VAT. New bill for sale is a vatable supply. You can register for VAT. You can get your training costs back. So if I try to wrap all of this up together, um, that's, the, that's the last of my slides, today's presentation was. Try and wrap this up together. Um, plan your business, go to your MMA, work out whether you're enthused, whether you're really gonna go for this or not. If you are, get your business planned. Decide how you're gonna structure, what are you going to do? What, what, what strategies do you think are exciting you or not? MMA will give you a very good sounding. Uh, a briefing to understand where you want to go with this. Let's get the business formed. Is it in your own name? Is it in a company? Great. Now we can engage in further training. You can start to do your mastermind or your, spe your specific strategy courses. In terms of VAT, don't be too anxious to claim back VAT 
because it might cause you to have to lose 20% of your revenue if you do raise some VAT perhaps too early. So it's really um, worth doing a sort of a little bit of a, a you know, just a, a back of a, a fag packet calculation and, you know, yeah, talk to, yeah, talk to your accountant, whoever it is, whether it's us or somebody else, talk to your accountant about does it make sense? Yeah. Um, so again, I get people who come to me and say, Mark, you know, can you get me registered with VAT? Do you really want me to do this to you? And uh, you go through the explanation and you discuss it and you do the fag packet calculation and then they say, huh, uh, no, leave it, will you? Um, so it's probably worth waiting until you get near the thre threshold or to the threshold then. And even if that means you can't get back that VAT, now there, there are costs that you incur prior to starting your business that you can claim some VAT back, yeah. prior to VAT registration that you can claim back. But it is just mathematics. Is it yeah. worthwhile hunting to get that little bit of cash back compared to the revenue? And frankly, if getting the VAT back on your training was paramount to you, then I suggest you probably... I'm not making a success of your business because yeah, you're, not, you're not trading enough. You're not, it, you're yeah. not trading enough. You haven't got to the volumes. Yeah, it should it should be a bit of a no brainer. If I mean, if you if you start with a business something, you're actually successful at what you're doing. Yeah, it will be self evident what you yeah. do. Yeah. Sorry, I hit I hit a button I shouldn't have done. Sorry. Yeah, C quite correct. Yeah, because the the on the um on the training we did what's well, a couple of weeks ago on the VAT yeah. side. Um, yeah. Which I thought was incredibly interesting, and I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to it in uh, in this as well below this video. Yeah. yeah. Um, which was you were talking about uh, the, the the sort of differences in uh, levels of VAT depending mm -hmm. on the sort of businesses you were doing. I think this really it was really interesting. So if anybody is interested in that, they definitely got to have a look at that because that 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 blew me away a little bit as well. I didn't realise that there was like you know twenty percent, five percent. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and the one that always confuses people is the difference between exempt and zero. Um, yeah, yeah, because exempt means you're outside of VAT, zero means you're inside. But hey, inside you're that, you've got so you've got to do a VAT return, but it's a zero VAT return. It's, it's zero on your outputs, yes, yeah. but you can claim your inputs back. Yeah, yeah, which which is a massive advantage to you. So it certainly is absolutely brilliant. But again, again, it's it's. Uh, I love these conversations because I I've always found this stuff incredibly tediously boring. I don't really understand it. And do you know what I do? I think I, I do what a lot of people do is because you don't quite understand it when you first first start listening to it. You tend to just like block your ears a little bit and say, "Look, I don't even want to worry about that at the moment. I'll I'll do all that later." You know? Yeah, it, it goes down the to do list. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and but I think what what's happened with with uh, doing these trainings with you is that suddenly it, it, it's it's sort of come to life a little bit, and I'm I'm beginning to realise that there is so much to this. Mm -hmm. that you don't have to do it yourself either. You know, I mean, the whole point is, you know, you you, you employ someone like yourself or you know a, a decent accountant, a decent tax yeah. person, um, that actually knows what they're doing. And there's very few people that are really doing, you know, sort of tax people who are um, sort of pro you know, property people as well. They understand that property side of it, you know. Yeah. Sort of yeah, there's there's, there's about six or eight of us in the country, as far as I'm aware, yeah. who really do walk the talk. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, book learning is great. Um, it's only when you start walking the talk and get the years of experience and T-shirts and scars that I think you actually get into some decent level of support but there's about six or eight of us now um which is good news yeah yeah and uh so but listen this mark again thanks for that um I'm just put yeah, you on the full screen if you want to take your presentation down so you can see what's going on with us um yeah well, so basically yeah. what yeah i mean you, we we've got if you put your um uh your email in below here as well below the uh uh, the video as well so you can if people do want to get in contact with you and i'll say the same caveat i do every every time we do this um this is something that that mark's doing out of the goodness of his heart basically for pin uh community um so don't take the mickey right if you can get these it's like ask ask a question you know sort of try and get some direction and things like that 
Um, but if you if you're going to get taken on and you know you want to know you know really get into it and start doing things, then you know become a client rather than you know, just keep on emailing and emailing and emailing and trying to get everything for free. This is really a uh, just a, a nice gesture of Mark's to sort of say that if you've got a query, come and talk to us. You know we'll try and help you out and uh, you know and it's it's a giving back things which is really good. But just don't take the Mickey out. I, I, I do say it every 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 time. Thank you for saying it. But, uh, and to be honest with you, uh, I think the message is getting through. Certainly Simon has been very helpful. And get that message across as well yeah um of people who who have um abused a little bit in the past um so i'm actually getting the messages that say i promise i'm not going to abuse it don't worry about it it's, it's okay <laughs> so well, thanks, it, thanks thanks you right. you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a really good you know it's really good that you do this you know you don't have to you know and uh yeah. and and giving someone a little bit of advice to start off with um, you know, getting them in the right direction and that sort of stuff. And also listening to these things, I think, is really important because, you know, it, I, I mean, I get loads of feedback about this, about, you know, I've learned, I've actually learned stuff and I actually understand where, what I've got to do, which is the actually, actually the most important thing. It's not just about learning little, little bits of information. Mm -hmm. It's about having control. You know, this is why I talk about this psychological control over what you do in your business, in your life. Yes. If you actually genuinely understand, I've, this is the next thing I've got to do. And before I do this thing, I really ought to talk to someone about this because I know that I, I'll get a much better advantage if I do that. You know, It's, it's knowing that there is a question. Yeah. And, and it's, it, whether we're doing funnel matrix, uh, funnel centric, sorry, whether we're doing accountancy, whatever we're doing, uh, you, you don't know the answers and you don't need to know the answers. You just need to know that there is a question. Hmm. And that you need to know that there is a person that you can go to for some solution, some input. And, and, and it's the same in everything we do. It is. It is. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Well, I mean, we appreciate you. So Thank, you, thank you very much. So anyway, listen, we've got another one coming up uh, in a, uh, maybe a couple of weeks' time, I it's think. It is. Yeah. You know, if you... If you're not on the the database, the uh, PIN community database, to be informed of when these things are happening, then um, let me know again in the comments um, because we've now got ourselves a, a nice little landing page with a form in there. You can put your details in. You can get onto that database. Um, so we're going to be sort of sharing it out as well so people can get onto the database so they know exactly what's going on because we have a ton of live stuff on here. Um, Mark's one of the things we've got panels we've got you know we've got Simon coming on uh, doing Q&A now uh, a lot and so there's loads and loads of great stuff going on so we'll let you know in the newsletters so until next time Mark I want to say thank you um, I, I mean as I say I really really enjoy these because I really get to understand tax which right. I never thought well, I would it was lovely chatting with you as always so you take care of yourself yeah. everyone Fantastic, Bye. mate. <laughs> See you later, everybody. Thanks very much for your time, and uh, keep keep uh, on the database so you know what's going on. See you later. Bye.